So one of the things that was part of the Inflation Reduction Act is a reduction in pharmaceutical drug prices for 10 drugs. Now, uh, of course, the ideal would be to lower all prescription drug prices because they're absurdly priced. But you had Kirsten Cinema was basically the, uh, the impediment to that, where she's taken, Jesus, at one point it was $500,000. I think now it's over a million dollars from big pharma lobbyists. And she was on the side of, actually, we're not going to lower prescription drug prices at all. It was totally out of Build Back Better and then the IRA. And then I don't know how, but uh, they somehow managed to convince her we can't do it for no uh, drugs. Can we at least do it for some and do it over like an extended period of time? And she buckled to, okay, we can lower like the cost of prescription drugs for like 10 of them. I mean, it's all, I mean, it's so gross and disgusting. And uh, Kirsten Sinema is the worst. And Joe Manchin is the worst. To be fair, this was one of those issues where even Joe Manchin was like, I would like to lower the, <laughs> the price for more prescription drugs. But Kirsten Sinema was the biggest uh, impediment. She was the roadblock to getting anything better than that. Now, Look, all this is kind of moot because under the Bayh-Dole Act, um, the president actually can intervene. It's called marching rights. And what they can do is lower the cost of prescription drugs for any drugs that were created with the help of taxpayers. And I got news for you. There hasn't been a drug made within the past few decades that hasn't had the help of uh, the U.S. taxpayer. So a lot of the funding for the research and development comes from U.S. taxpayers. It's done through universities. And so they could, Biden could unilaterally lower a lot of prescription drug prices. And he should. He should. He should get on that and do it ASAP. Now, even this mild reform, mild reform of lowering the cost of 10 prescription drugs has led to Big Pharma losing their goddamn minds and just embarrassing themselves and making fools of themselves. And, um... They basically have melted down and accused the government of taking their property and um, they've threatened to sue and all sorts of stuff. So here we have a committee hearing and there's a, an attorney for Johnson & Johnson, the, the pharma company, and Ro Khanna absolutely nails this little weasel on this issue. Watch this. Trying to trick you. It, it treats leukemia. Uh, do you know uh, what the price that Johnson & Johnson has set for it? I do not have that on it's, my fingertips. Uh, it's $484 per capsule per tablet, which works out to about $14,000 per month, which works out to about $16,000, $160,000 per year for leukemia patients. Now, do you know, or I can tell you how much money, gross revenue, the Johnson & Johnson has made from this drug over the last 10 years? Congressman, it's not something that I'm an expert at, not something sure. I'm here to testify to today. $22 billion. Do you know the gross profits of Johnson & Johnson in 2023? I couldn't tell you that. $65 billion. Oh, God. When you hear these numbers, it is absolutely infuriating. The system is such a joke and such a mess. It's so exploitative. And we're talking about life-saving drugs. Especially because, like I said, it's not like we're, oh my God, we're so reliant on these private, for-profit pharma companies to come up with all these, um, these drugs, this medicine, this solution to your problem. No, a lot of the funding comes from the government. So you pay for the research and development on the front end through your tax dollars. Then a big pharma company swoops in and buys up the rights to, to the drug, and then they charge you on the back end too and price gouge the shit out of you. That's what... Rokana is exposing right here. God, something has to be done about this, man. Holy cow. Look, there are some things where it just makes sense to make it public, to nationalize it. I think pharmaceutical drugs and healthcare and health insurance, I think ev like most things involving health, I think that's the case, right? I think it would just function better if you nationalized it. You wouldn't have this rampant price gouging and people getting rich off of other people's misery, right? Now, again, look, that's not to say every single industry is better if you nationalize it, because that's not true. There's plenty of industries, consumer goods in particular. It should be left to the private market. You don't want the government being directly involved in making couches or making, you know, PlayStations, video game consoles, whatever, fill in the blank. Like, there's a number of things that can be left to the private market. But something like this, it just, we've tried it, and it has utterly and abysmally failed to the point where... Remember when Bernie was taking people to, what was it, Mexico or Canada to get insulin? Because that's the only way they could afford their freaking insulin was to do that. 
at the very least, what you could do is have a public option for pharma. That's actually what uh, Gavin Newsom in California did, is they're doing basically state-run insulin, like state-created uh, insulin. And then they're selling it, obviously, at a much, much, much lower price than the big pharma jackals are. You've got a pill for leukemia patients. You sell it at 484 per capsule. That's $160,000 a year. You've made $22 billion over that over the last 10 years, and you're making a $65 billion in profit. Now, we have passed as a Congress, and the president has signed a bill saying, you know what, let Medicare negotiate to try to bring that price down. And you, uh, and your department, because you're assistant general counsel, have filed a lawsuit saying that that negotiation would be an unjust taking. Uh, uh, let me ask you this. Do you believe when the Veterans Administration negotiates for drug prices with you that that is a violation of the takings clause? Congressman, I appreciate the question. The bases for our litigation uh, against HHS with respect to the Inflation Reduction Act are fully disclosed in our complaint. I'm not an expert in this area. You're, you're here, you're the assistant general counsel for a company that is accusing the United States government of taking your property because we're negotiating. And you can't answer <laughs> a simple question about, I'm, I'm just a yes or a no. Does the veterans affairs negotiation with Johnson & Johnson constitute a taking? Congressman, we believe that the IRA no, no, I don't, I don't, I'm not asking about that. I'm asking you about, do you believe the Veterans Affairs, when they negotiate, does that constitute a taking? Congressman, again, that is not a litigation that I have great familiarity okay. with. Okay. Oh, what a weasel. What a, in other words, look, the point Ro Khan is making is, look, for the VA, we negotiate drug prices. We do it for the VA. That's basically like a single-payer health care system for veterans that we already have in this country, in the same way we have, like, single-payer for... Uh, the elderly with Medicare, and to some extent, single payer with the very poor with Medicaid. He's asking, wait, is that an unjust taking? Are we like robbing you, stealing your property by negotiating for drug prices through the VA? And she won't answer it. Why? Because the answer is, of course, it's not there. So why would it be, you know, robbing you to negotiate for better prices across the board? And in the case of the IRA, for ten drugs. God. Ugh. Really, really phenomenal job there uh, by Ro Khanna. I think he did really well. And look, this is one of those things that... It's a dire warning as a matter of policy, but also as a matter of politics, that Joe Biden and the Democrats want to do well in the next election, want to defeat Trump and the authoritarians. One of the things you could do that overnight would be a game changer is if Biden came out with an executive order invoking the march in rights, lowering all the prescription drug prices for drugs that the U.S. government um, helped create, funded with the taxpayers. I mean, how, what percentage of the drugs would you be lowering the prices for? 80%? 70%? I mean, I'm just guessing here, right? But like I said, no drug within the past few decades has been created without U.S. government help, without taxpayer help. So if you were to do that overnight, lower the prescription drug prices for... 70, 80% of the drugs, do an executive order, then go brag about it, then have all the Democrats go out there and brag about it. Game changer. Game changer. It wouldn't matter that Biden is 17 minutes from croaking. People would be like, oh, all right, I'll vote for the guy. Help me out, right? So anyway, great job there from Ro Khanna. I want to see more of this stuff. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.